The Trudeau government is the most divisive government in Canadian history. It's no wonder that a lot of Canadians really, really, really hate Justin Trudeau. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show. Hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy Monday. We have made it into week three of the federal election campaign. And I want to point something out, a little bit of a disturbing trend that's starting to happen. It's coming out over the weekend. I believe that the media narrative, the legacy media narrative, is starting to shift a little bit into Justin Trudeau's favor. Now, we all know that Justin Trudeau has run a horrible first two weeks of the campaign. His whole master plan of running a post-pandemic election where everybody's just so happy to be going Going back to normal where he can run on this wedge issue of mandatory vaccinations where he can send out $500 checks to seniors to bribe them while the CERB money is still being poured out. Trudeau believed that he could easily glide to a majority government particularly given that the conservative leader Aaron O'Toole is still relatively unknown among Canadians. Well that went all wrong for Trudeau and we have been playing that out and, and recounting it on the show on the Candace Malcolm show over the past few weeks. But over the weekend we saw a little bit of a turn a little bit of a shift, and it is indeed in Justin Trudeau's favor. Now, I'm talking about these protests and these hecklers who have been appearing at several of Trudeau's events throughout the campaign. Trudeau has been heckled, he has been booed, and he has been sort of chased by uh, a few select protesters pretty much everywhere he's gone on this campaign. But over the weekend, things really, really took a turn. So on Friday night, there was a large crowd, hundreds of people showed up at Trudeau's event in Bolton, on. Ontario, and just really apparently, according to reports, made it completely impossible for Trudeau to hold his event. So the Ontario police, the OPP, determined that it was unsafe for Trudeau to hold that event, and so it was cancelled. We saw protests, uh, some reports of protests getting violent. We saw other eyewitness reports of racist and misogynistic statements and comments being made by the protesters. Now, I didn't see any audio or video that would corroborate these reports. However, However, that is what media are reporting. And if that is the case, of course, it should be condemned in its entirety. Racist comments, sexist comments, especially directed towards police and security personnel for the prime minister, for the liberal leader. There's no place for that. That's that's really ugly. That's really vile stuff. And if that's happening, it should stop. However, when it comes to the rights of Canadians, the right of Canadians to peacefully protest, to show their dismay, to show their anger towards a sitting prime minister, towards a government, this is all legitimate stuff. This is all perfectly fine. Of course, the media, what they do is they take the sort of worst of the worst in the crowd. They show the signs with profanity. They show the angry white men yelling. And what they've done is they've turned this into Justin Trudeau's favor to make him look like that he's this high-minded leader who is going to just continue with his message regardless of a few far-right fringe cranks, which is exactly how the media is painting these protesters out to be. Now, before we get too much into the details of what is happening to Justin Trudeau and how the media is covering it in just a really silly way, I want to just make the point, the obvious point, that this happens to every politician. When it comes to death threats, when it comes to ugly language, when it comes to the kind of anger that citizens express towards their political leaders, it does happen in every stripe. It's interesting how the legacy media only really pick up on it when it is happening to a left-wing politician, or particularly when it's happening to a woman. And we, we know that because there's been so many reports reports about Catherine McKenna getting uh, bullied and heckled online, very few about Michelle Rempel who gets the same kind of bullying and heckling online, but because she's a conservative they don't really cover it. Another example would be out in Alberta when NDP leader Rachel Notley was a premier, we would constantly see news stories about how she was getting hateful messages, about how there were death threats, about how right-wing Albertans were really, really angry. Now that the conservative premier Jason Kenney is there, he gets equally, if not more, ugly threats, people posting really horrible things about him, horrible things about his image, everything like that. The same kind of stuff about Rachel Notley, if not worse, and the media never covers it. The media is completely silent. Jason Kenney was even getting death threats against his mother, and the media barely batted an eye. So we know that there is already that distinction and that double standard. Of course, it does happen to every politician. It has happened all the way back, uh, there were people circulating online examples of how Brian Mulroney used to get this, about how Jean Chrétien used to get this, we know Harper used to get this. Here's a couple examples of Harper and Doug Ford and some of the treatment that they get by protesters. And the wrong decisions at the national level on taxes, on spending, on deficits, 
they would significantly raise those risks. Okay. At a May Day protest outside Queens Park, photos emerged of a guillotine dripping with fake blood as demonstrators carried out a mock execution. Of course, this isn't right, and we should condemn any violent threats towards politicians. There really shouldn't be room for that kind of language in politics. But the point is, it does happen to everyone. There is a fringe percentage of the population that is going to express their dismay towards government uh, through anger and sometimes crossing the line into violent speech and calls for violence, which is, which is again, where, where we draw the line as a society. In a democratic society, you can protest, you can say a lot of things, we have freedom of speech, but when it crosses into violence and death threats, that's when it's too far. Again, the media is not telling the full story to make it seem like Justin Trudeau is the only one who is a victim of this. So of course, we should condemn the violence, but also we should keep in mind and keep some perspective. Now, this is why I say that things are starting to turn into Justin Trudeau's favor, because the media were very, very quick to dismiss these protesters. They call them fringe, they call them far right, call them unhinged. And every report that I saw, they love to make this point that these protesters are unmasked and not socially distanced. So they're trying to paint them out as the sort of quack, anti-vaxxers, anti-science, the very fringe elements of our society so that you have no sympathy for them and instead you have sympathy for the prime minister. Just look at this CBC report. It's so silly. It's just straight propaganda. Here it goes. It says, Trudeau says he won't back down after protests hurl death threats, racist and sexist slurs. This is Trudeau at his best. This is his favorite type of campaigning and this is the media's favorite iteration of himself. Trudeau is going to continue to promote his message of progress and science and these ugly horrible protesters are hurling death threats, racist and sexist slurs and so this whole media story is again just trying to make Justin Trudeau out to be the hero. Some of the quotes in here are just so hilarious. So. This is a quote from Trudeau from the story. He goes, no, I'm not going to back down on a message that Canadians know is the right path forward. And that's why Canadians need to choose to move forward at this pivotal time. So again, Justin Trudeau gets to play the hero and the media is all too happy to play into this narrative that the people who are protesting him are fringe and are far right. I wanna to point to my colleague at the Toronto Suns, Brian Lilly's column on this issue because he really, really hit the nail on the head. So Lilly writes, Trudeau's wild claims show that he will say anything to get elected and Brian Lilly really makes a point that Trudeau is trying to paint his opponents into something that they're not. So rather than running against Aaron O'Toole, rather than running against Jagmeet Singh, he has created this boogeyman in his head of this hateful anti-vaxxer fringe person and he, you know he's talking to the protesters, he's talking down to them and Trudeau is pretending that he is running against that character in instead of just running as a liberal and talking about the conservative positions, talking about the NDP positions and sort of explaining how he's different. Instead, he's creating this kind of dramatic image of the country and pretending again that he's running against these fringe boogeymen. Uh, Lily points out in his column something interesting. According to a recent Ipsos poll, nearly half of Canadians, 44%, told Ipsos that Trudeau will say anything to get elected. Now, you may think any politician will say anything to get elected. According to the same poll, 27% of Canadians said that about Aaron O'Toole and 7% said it about Jagmeet Singh. So Canadians really do have a negative opinion of Justin Trudeau. And so it goes back to what Trudeau was saying over the weekend. This is a quote from Trudeau talking to the protesters. He says, do we fall into division and hatred and racism and violence or do we say no? And now this is why I say that this is Trudeau's favorite iteration of himself and this is his favorite way to campaign. The reality is that Justin Trudeau is an incredibly bitter, incredibly divisive politician. He routinely denigrates Canadians that he disagrees with. He uses hateful and divisive language to describe his political opponents and he loves nothing more than and to describe large swaths of Canadians as racist, Islamophobic. His recent one that he loves is calling them anti-vaxxers. In the last campaign, we saw it over and over again where he would describe his political opponents as white supremacists. So Trudeau will take, again, just the most divisive, despicable way of describing a person and sort of casually
actually apply it to his political opponents. He loves to divide. He loves to pit Canadians against each other. And he is finally in a position where because of these protesters, because of these hecklers, he can once again do that. And the media is all too happy to pick up on this storyline and push it for Justin Trudeau. So here's just a few examples of Trudeau and his team of liberals doing what they love to do most, which is to name call Canadians and to divide us against each other. I recommend that the members of the Conservative Party in their zeal to make personal attacks not start to push too far into intolerance uh, towards Canadians of diverse origins. My view is that we will be more successful collectively if we're actually able to successfully promote women into leadership roles. We will drag along the Neanderthal those who don't agree with that, and uh, that will be our continuing approach. They ran an election on snitch lines against Muslims. They ran an election on Islamophobia and division. This is interesting, because we've all seen conservative politicians casting doubt on science, casting doubt on experts, saying the pandemic isn't real, you shouldn't wear masks. The Harper Conservatives put in measures in the Citizenship Act that told Canadians like me that we were below those who were born on Canadian soil. Mr. Speaker, after being asked directly to condemn white supremacists yesterday, the leader of the opposition not only refused to do so, he refused to even say the words. So I will give him another opportunity to do so today. Uh, and through his uh, deputy leader. Will he denounce white supremacy, the alt-right movement, and finally apologize for sharing a platform with him? Trudeau and company love to mischaracterize their opponents, call them obscene names, accuse them of horrible, horrible things like being a racist, an Islamophobe, a white supremacist, and so on. But if you think about it, think about those people who have come out to protest against Justin Trudeau. Sure, they don't represent the majority of Canadians, but their voice still matters. And it is important to reflect on what has happened in our country over the past two years that would drive some Canadians, probably reasonable Canadians, to act in this way to go and protest, to heckle, to scream obscenities. Imagine the point that you would have to be, the breaking point that you would have to be to go and do that. Just think of the number of Canadians who have had to see their business shut down, whose business has been forced to close because of lockdown policies. Imagine the number of families who have gone bankrupt. Imagine the number of families who have lost a loved one during this time, not just to COVID, but to diseases of despair, things like suicide, drug overdose, depression, and so on. Now that we finally have an end in sight, that the pandemic may finally be behind us, that we won't have to endure more lockdowns, Trudeau is running an incredibly divisive campaign on the wedge issue of forced vaccinations, even for people who have already had COVID and developed the antibodies, even for people who are incredibly healthy, for young people, for people with pre-existing medical conditions, and for people who disagree on moral grounds. It doesn't matter. Trudeau wants to force all of us to get the vaccine. And now he wants to further divide us by forcing us to carry around papers indicating whether or not we have followed the ever-evolving government health edicts. This doesn't sound very much like a free society, and at times over the past two years, Canada hasn't felt very much like a free society. It hasn't felt like a free liberal democracy. Canadians have every right to protest against these measures. Canadians have every right to protest against the Trudeau government, regardless of what the CBC and what the legacy media have to say. And Canadians deserve better than an arrogant and divisive leader that pits us against each other. I'm Candace Malcolm, and this is The Candace Malcolm Show.